Sarajevo, a city rich with historical and cultural tradition that also holds hidden many stories and anecdotes. All of them the result of its long history and influences of many cultures, ages and customs. Even though its history and first beginnings can be traced all the way back into the Paleolithic Stone Age, the true foundations of the modern-day city of Sarajevo were founded in the 15th century. The founder of the city is known to be a nobleman called Isabek Ishakovic during the beginning of the Ottoman rule in Bosnia and Herzegovina. He started the construction of what would later become Sarajevo between some of the oldest city quarters of Ben Basha and Bashtarshia. There, he created a mansion called Sarai in Turkish, which means palace or administrative center. From this comes the modern city name of Sarajevo. For this reason, we are going to start the series of stories from Sarajevo history here, where the buildings that we can see today are a perfect representation of the city's interesting past as the place where the cultures meet. The year is 1890. The Austro-Hungarian governor of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Minister of Finances for the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Benjamin Kelly, is trying for the last 10 years to pass his decision about building an administrative center of the city of Sarajevo. He finally entrusts this project to one of the most renowned architects of this time, Carlo Parzik. But to his utter disappointment, Parshik's plans just didn't satisfy Kalai's imagination, so he soon changed his decision and gave the task of constructing what would basically be considered a city hall at the time to a man known to history as Alexander Witte. Witek had previously designed many different buildings, but the Sarajevo City Hall would prove to be his masterpiece. He designed the building in the never-before-seen-in-this-part-of-the-world pseudo-Moorish style, and to fit it neatly into the city plan, it had an unusual shape of a triangle. Getting his inspiration from the Mamluk structures in Cairo, Egypt, and the typically fatmetic balconies and colorful vitrages, as well as Spanish influence in the design of the painted walls and ceilings. He combined it with the typical Viennese grandiose and elegant build style, so it would represent the bond between East and West. In one building, he wanted to tell the story of the city and its history. However, as the story tells, just before the main dome in the center of the triangular structure was finished, an unforeseen problem appeared. The main auditorium of the building was simply too dark. The story goes on to tell that Benjamin Kalai, who came into the inspection of the building, was disappointed in this result. But when he told this to Witek, it overwhelmed his already deteriorating health, which culminated in Witek taking his own life. Despite the popular legend that he jumped off the half-finished dome of the Sarajevo City Hall, there is no evidence to support that claim, but it is still told as a story and survived as one of many legends floating around the city. After these unfortunate events, the project of redesigning the Sarajevo City Hall was taken over 
by Cirilo Ivekovic, who made his own changes to the original plan, adding the massive vitrage in the middle auditorium of the building, thus allowing for the light to pass into it. It is also important to say that the project of the city hall wouldn't be complete without the changes in the city's infrastructure and, most importantly, by adding an electric tram in 1895, along with an entirely new system of electric streetlights that were among the first in Europe. We will also mention that the city of Sarajevo already had a network of tram rails in operation since 1885 that were used by horse-pulled trams. This would make Sarajevo one of the first cities in the world to have this type of public transport. In the year 1896, the Sarajevo City Hall was officially opened as the seat of the city administration. Throughout its long history, it would be used for many things such as the city courthouse and even the seat of the Bosnian parliament from 1910 to 1911. After the World War II, it became the center of the county court and the assembly of Bosnia and Herzegovina all the way to the year 1949, when it was designated to be the new People's and University Library of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the seat of the Department for Rare Books and Manuscripts. During the war period between 1992 and 1995, the Sarajevo City Hall was hit by multiple mortar blasts, but on the night between 25th and 26th of August 1992, it suffered a shelling that caused a fire, which consumed most of the interior and caused almost complete destruction of the building itself. In the fire was lost about 80% of the entire manuscript and book collection, as well as the catalogue of the People's and University Library of Bosnia and Herzegovina. From 1996, the reconstruction and rebuilding of the city hall, following the original style and build techniques, was conducted in multiple stages and the beauty of Sarajevo finally opened its doors again on 9th of March 2014. Today, the Sarajevo City Hall is one of only a handful of operational city halls, serving as the seat of the mayor of Sarajevo that you can still visit yourself. 